One of the coolest things about studying the martial arts is also learning how to self-preserve. When you interact with people who are experts in the martial arts, like my original instructor at Indian University in the Taekwondo program, I have to say that I wasn't always fond of him, but I really valued the fact that he was a professional in his business. I also knew the areas of his business that were not quite up to snuff. I also knew enough about his private life because I was friends with his daughter, and openly that was enough. But everyone in the club who had been there long enough also knew those stories because he was transparent, always authentic, always clear about what he expected of me and anyone else who lent an ear. The truth is his family relationship to me was really mainly through his daughter, Jennifer, and she is an old, old friend that I don't ever see anymore, and I'm okay with that. She went off and probably got married and did her thing. But when I was working my way through preparing for Japan, I was producing self-defense programs. I was doing that not to be famous across the land, but to help people prepare themselves for the coming years. That a lot of people were getting mugged, a lot of cars were being stolen, and a lot of things were being happening in an affluent community. The value of self-protection courses is that people learn how to preserve themselves in a time when there wasn't as many distractions. Today, there's a lot of technology distractions that we are seeing in people's hands, and people aren't realizing they're putting themselves at serious lethal risk, not only for themselves, but for people that they don't see because they're too busy driving down a street or driving through a parking lot looking at their cell phones. As a man who sits quite a bit to take care of his aging heart, I see these violators of the law. And what I feel is, that it needs to be fairly clear to these people by an officer sitting along the wall, paying attention to the plates, calling them out to his friends to say, this one's driving on the cell phone. And openly, the cell phone needs to be shut off or cut off for the day. And openly, that can happen to people. But when they cut off a cell phone for a long time, when family uses lies in documents to be a billy of mine, I don't like it. Because my life was on track with God's plan for my life. And every time I get moving forward exactly where I need to be, somebody from a biological original family that is not allowed to be near me interferes with me. You lied to yourself when you stole my mail. You lied to yourself when you let yourself in my apartment to no avail. You lied to yourself when you stole intimate objects that don't have any right to be in your mind. And you lied to yourself when you took my property and gave it to someone else to be kind. You lied to yourself when every time you thought of me, you thought you knew how girly I was. But the truth is, I'm a gentleman. I'm a man after my father's lines. He spent the most time with me, not you. Of all the people in my life, the most important people of my life have never lied to me, except you. You see, you are my closest friend. You are my closest confidant. Not entirely. But I relied on you a lot, and that might not have been kind or fair. But I did finally turn the tables on you and say, look... I'm not your child. I'm not your baby B. I'm nothing like that to you, and I never will be. When I told you how you monkeyed yourself in your job, you had to take it in because you regarded me at that time. But at some point, you got so angry about what was going on in our family that you just lost your mind. And openly, I don't have to tolerate the shit you pull, and I don't have to put up with an older brother who always wants to pull one up some shit because I get it at enough in the real world. Men are shitbags to each other all the time. I have to listen to foul, stupid language all the time. And at some point, I said, okay, I'll make that foul language mine. But in truth, I have the right to love who I want to love. I have the right to make love to who I want to make love to. I have the right to choose who my sex partners are, but you had no right to abuse who I am. And when I say that, I mean you have abused who I am. You've abused my name. You've abused my legal rights. You've abused my medical rights. You've abused my privacy rights. You chose to be an abuser in my life. And for that reason alone, I don't have to have you in my life. But you are still lawfully, legally liable for everything you've taken of my property and possessions. And for that alone, you could end up in jail.